Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're going through the Bible for the fourth time, and we come today to Micah chapter 4, beginning in verse number 1. Micah 4, verse 1. Get your Bible if you can. You can study the whole Bible with me, four series at thebibleversebyverse.com. You choose, you click, you listen, and all you need to bring is your Bible. That's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 4, Micah, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and peoples shall flow to it. We are in these last days. You say, Moret, you're one of those prophecy nuts that always sees every little thing as being a sign of the last days? No, I just know what the last days mean. We're in the last days. The last days in Scripture refer to the entire church age from the time that Jesus ascends into heaven until his return. Those are the last days. Those are the final, the final days, the final dispensation, if you are one of those people, if you don't count the millennium. But it's the last days of the times of the Gentiles and normal life, as nor abnormal as it can be, here on earth. And today, people from all over the world are a part of the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, and that's what he is referring to. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow to it. So this is talking spiritually about people from all over the world flowing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. <clears throat> he will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. I should mentioned that there is a double fulfillment to this. Yes, this does speak of the church age and people from all over the world coming to Christ and worshiping him. It truly is a worldwide kingdom. And God, through Christ and his church, has been teaching his way since the day of Pentecost. The Lord has been teaching people the way of forgiveness and salvation, and those who receive the message find joy in walking the path of Jesus Christ. Now, someday Jesus will return and he will literally be on Mount Zion. That's where his throne will be. And there will be nations on the new earth and they will come to Christ. Everybody will come to Christ. Not to worship him, to seek wisdom from him. I mean, it's going to be a wonderful time to live. So it's not unusual for there to be a double fulfillment of prophecy in Scripture, and this is one instance. Three, <clears throat> he shall judge between many peoples and rebuke strong nations afar off. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And there will be nations on the new earth, but they're not going to be fighting like they are today. This speaks of the peace and harmony that will occur when Jesus returns that will be everywhere between individuals, between nations, on the new earth. We're all going to be in our raised, glorified bodies, and we're going to be sinless. But this also speaks of the peace and harmony that those who are committed to Christ have with each other, even today. And when there are disputes, which there always are, Christ settles them when the people involved yield to his lordship. He takes care of differences 
And even if there are those dif- disagreements, they disagree in a, an agreeable way, a Christ-like manner. <clears throat> Verse 4, But everyone shall sit under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Good times in that perfect world await those who belong to Christ. There's going to be nothing to worry about, nothing to fear, because Jesus will be in charge and evil will be a thing of the past, a distant memory. Five, for all people walk each in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. So let the unsaved serve their gods today if they want to. But those who persevere with the Lord Jesus Christ will serve and enjoy him forever. Six, in that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame, I will gather the outcast, and those whom I have afflicted. So during, during the church age, God promises to gather the distressed and those who are suffering from misery in this world and give them peace through Christ. And of course, ultimately, this will be fulfilled in every way imaginable when Jesus returns. Seven, I will make the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation. So the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. The remnant refers to Christians. God will gather all spiritual exiles and make them members of a holy nation through Jesus Christ. So all the wonderful pictures, these are wonderful pictures that are painted, not just in this book, but especially here. All these wonderful pictures speak of the good times and the holiness that those who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, even in this age, enjoy now, in part at least, and will enjoy perfectly in the future on the new earth. See, this time, the time that we have, that we are in right now, we Christians, where we fellowship with Jesus, our creator, we gain wisdom from him, and we have joy from him and peace from him, in spite of the misery that's in this sinful world, what we experience personally, in part, is a picture of what the whole world will be like after Jesus returns. Verse 8, And you, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come, even the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. The the kingship here refers to the royal line of David. God says, Israel, you're losing your king for now. And they were because they were going to be taken into captivity. You're losing your king for now, but I'm going to restore him. And God has restored the royal line of David through Jesus Christ. He's the king of all who trust in him, both Jews and Gentiles. Now, his throne isn't on earth, it's in heaven. But nevertheless, our our citizenship, the Bible says, if we're Christians, is in heaven. That's where our king is. That's where our kingdom is. And someday it's going to be transferred to earth. Same king just a different location. Verse 9, Now why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in your midst? Has your counselor perished? For pangs have seized you like a woman in labor. Yeah, the remnant of God's people. In Micah's day were filled with sadness as they saw their nation crumble spiritually due to the unbridled sin. 10, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in birth pangs. For now you shall go forth from the city. You shall dwell in the field, and to Babylon you shall go. There you shall be delivered. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. God's people would return to their land after 70 years of exile. They will be restored, and they will be there when the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem several hundred years later. Verse 11, Now also many nations have gathered against you who say, Let her be defiled, and let 
and let our eye look upon Zion. So, it's going to be a lot of mal malicious joy over the destruction of Israel by those who are sent by God to defeat her, to destroy her because of her sin. 12. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. These nations that are going to attack Israel in the will of God. But God says they don't know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand his counsel. For he will gather them like sheaves to the threshing floor. So the conquerors don't have a clue about what's going on, really. They have no clue about what God is doing as they destroy Israel. They think it's their great power that's giving them the victory. They don't understand that God is allowing it to happen to punish his people and bring them to repentance. They're on a completely different level than God. 13. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. God says, my people are weak now. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make your horn iron, and I will make your hooves bronze. And you, you shall beat in pieces many peoples. You shall beat in pieces many peoples. I will consecrate their gain to the Lord and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. So God is saying, my people are weak now, but someday I'm going to make them strong. I'm going to give them strength, unbeatable strength. When God's people, when their punishment has run its course and they return from captivity, the Lord will restore the wealth that the heathen took away. In that day, God's people will use their wealth the way God wants it to be used. So here we see something that God often does. He warns of punishment. When the warning is not heeded and there is no repentance, he punishes. He announces punishment has come, and he always does that. And then, in the midst of announcing the coming wrath of God for the sins of the people, he will often include a message of hope. Just, it'll be better. But you're still going through this because of your sin, but it's going to be better on the other end. So that's something we can always hang our head on as Christians. No chastening seems pleasant or is pleasant to us, the Bible says, but we know in the end it works a, a greater good. So we live by faith and we continue to trust God through all unpleasant things that happen, knowing that he is going to work it all for our good. And with that, we'll stop for today, and next time we'll pick it up in Micah chapter 5. You can be a part of this ministry that's been teaching the Word of God verse by verse, the whole counsel of God, verse by verse, now for over 35 years, by praying for me and praying for the Word of God. And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, if you go to the front page and you click the Donate button, you can prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That's another way that you can be a part of this ministry. So please pray for me. Please pray for the Word of God. And if God leads and how He leads, prayerfully give. And until next time, so long.